Hello guys, this is Tafatwa from StackDev and welcome to my YouTube course. In this tutorial, we are going to look at artificial intelligence, machine learning and deep learning. Artificial intelligence has been uh, in the landscape for quite quite some time uh, in terms of when it began. It actually began in the 1950s. But over the recent years, we have seen some most uh, interesting models that have been built uh, in the industry, uh, some being open source, some being closed source. Just thought that maybe this might be a perfect opportunity to just uh, create a video where we will go through these three uh, uh, different aspects of artificial intelligence, machine learning, and deep learning. So what you'll learn in this video is we're going to clearly separate them, right? Because there's a difference between artificial intelligence, machine learning, and deep learning. So as we dive deep uh, into these three uh, different uh, concepts, in as much as they're closely related, we're going to uh, uh, deep, take a deep dive into them. And then at the towards the middle of the course, um, we'll then uh, go ahead and build our first neural network, uh, which we are simply going to do some binary classification. So what is artificial intelligence, right? So artificial intelligence uh, is simply an effort to automate uh, intellectual tasks uh, normally performed by humans. Artificial intelligence, it actually encompasses machine learning and deep learning, but it also has some aspects uh, that does not involve learning at all. This is what used to happen back in the day around the 1950s, right? So in the early 1950s, uh, there were approaches that did not involve learning at all, right? So this is noted in early chess programs, for instance, that were created uh, or written back in the day, right? What used to happen back in the day is programs would be written and they'll be explicitly hard-coded with a large set of rules um, and expected outcomes, right? And uh, for quite a while, this was known as symbolic AI. So with, with this general understanding of artificial intelligence, where it has come from, you can actually see that it has to evolve, right? Because um, it became an issue, uh, you know, uh, trying to uh predict outcomes on 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 data that was sort of like complicated right so for playing chess the data might not be as complicated because you know the rules for different moves so you could actually go ahead and hard code these rules right so that uh you can create some sort of a uh, model right so back in the day this was known as symbolic ai so but what is machine learning Right. So machine learning, uh, unlike uh, classical programming, uh, where you have rules and data and then you have some sort of like computation uh, that happens uh, via some service or in between to produce outcomes. Right. With machine learning is the other way around. Right. So machine learning models, uh, they are trained. Uh, rather than explicitly programmed. So what do I mean? So with machine learning models, uh, you can actually see that uh, you can have a machine learning model that leverage on a huge number of data set and expected outcomes, right? Which are the answers uh, according to this diagram. And then what you are trying to do here is you're trying to uh, to make your model uh, through some algorithms to be able to predict the rules to which the answers uh, came from right so this is unlike uh, classical programming because one one of the issues with classical programming is uh, if we have complicated uh, tasks that you want to determine outcomes to it means if there's a new uh, if there's a new uh, change or task that needs to be programmed you have to explicitly program to your model right so in order in order to solve complicated uh, complicated problems uh, this is something that we'd have to do over and over again but with machine learning what you're saying is you have the data of tasks that have already been done before and the expected outcomes uh, that produced uh, by that by that data you are simply trying to uh, train a model where we are saying you as the machine or you as the machine learning model can you actually go ahead and predict the outcomes um or predict sorry rather the rules uh that uh that that contributed uh, to have these outcomes from this specific data set so that is the machine learning principle things to consider Right. So whenever you are doing a machine learning uh, model, uh, you basically need uh, three things. Right. So first of all, you need the input data points. Uh, you need examples of expected output, uh, output which are well known as the labels. Uh, and a way uh, to measure uh, if the algorithm is, is doing well. Right. Or if the algorithm uh, or your model is actually learning uh, in a correct manner. 
right? So these are the three basic uh, things that you basically need in order to build a machine learning model. This is an example that I have, uh, which I took from uh, the book called uh, Deep Learning with Python, right? So if you can see from our graphs, right, we basically have three graphs, right? So the first graph is showing us some sort of data, um, which is raw data, right? So this raw data uh, is not classified at all. So what we're trying to do with a uh, machine learning model, right, is we're trying to say uh, for the model that you are building, you are trying to uh, let it uh, choose or find these transformations that can actually go ahead and separate these data sets to say this data from here to here, this is data that is represented as black, uh, black data and the other data is white data. So the machine learning is uh, or the model that you're building it's it's supposed to somehow uh, go ahead and and meaningfully uh, uh, create these transformations uh, that you can now clearly see uh, on this diagram number two whereby uh, our machine learning is trying to understand uh, the data trying to separate you know the white dotted data and the black dotted data uh, by putting these lines right and then uh, for a better presentation, uh, once we have successfully trained our model, we can actually see that it has separated the data to say these are the black dotted data, these are the white dotted data along both the x and y axis, right? So this is basically what the machine learning model is trying to do. So deep learning is just uh, an idea uh, where uh, there will be successive, successive layers of representations, right? So what do I mean by that? So let's say, for example, you have, you want to classify uh, a deep neural network uh, where you will have some numbers that are written, let's say, from one from zero to nine right and then you want to predict the outcome right so this is uh, uh, a normal um, uh, classification of numbers that have been done uh, back in the day so for example let's say we have an original input as four as an image right so what you are doing now in deep learning is you are going to pass this four across these layers right so what you call layers in artificial in machine learning or in deep learning uh these are basically the building blocks of a neural network right of or of a machine learning model so what we're simply trying to do here is we're simply trying to pass this data uh, across these layers and you have these layers try to understand and interpret uh these these four data in in terms of its different presentations or its different formats that can actually go ahead and give us the number four as an output right so this is an image of four so you want your model to be able to classify that this four that was then written on an image it's actually a digit number four right so just take these layers as some sort of like filters where the machine learning model will try to understand it bit by bit, uh, sort of like purifying the data uh, across these layers, right? So this is how you basically uh, build uh, a deep learning uh, model. Uh, there's an idea of unlike machine learning, there are no layers involved, but with deep learning, uh, especially when you're creating uh, neural deep networks, which we'll look at shortly, uh, you have to have these layers that to sort of like purify uh, the data as it comes across uh, your sequential of models, right? So as you can see here um, uh, on this image, uh, deep learning is technically a multi-stage way of learned data representations, right? So what we are saying to find those transformations, what we are saying is if you have an original input, for example, S4, uh, you pass it into these layers of representations, right? So as you can see, you can take it literally as it means to say uh, when this four variable is being passed, right? It's, it's becoming purified more and more as it moves across these layers of the neural network. The specifications uh, of what a deep layer does uh, to its input is told in layers, right? So like what I've mentioned, so these layers, uh, it's where the information is being stored, right? And as the layer is, is the model continuously try to learn about the information that will be passed through, uh, they will be sort of like weighted, right? And these weights are just basically a bunch of numbers, right? So, so let's just look at this diagram for a bit, right? So the way machine learning works is you have an input X, right? Which is your 
data or your raw data that you are trying to classify right so with this data uh, we are going to pass uh, this data into some sequences of layers right so i can give you an example let's say we have a bunch of animals right images so there are cats there are dogs there are lizards or different types of uh, animals right that you are trying to classify to say uh, once I pass this image, I need my model to be able to tell me that this image is a cat or this one is a dog and etc. And then you have these what you call the outcomes or the labels, right? So whenever you train a machine learning model, you should have a bunch of data and then some labels, right? Or, or some truth uh, value, some true targets that you are trying to predict. What you need to do here is uh, the input data X, right? Whenever you are building your neural network is you need to pass it to these layers of data transformations, right? So as it pass through these layers, uh, it will be represented as weights, right? So weights, basically, these are just a bunch of numbers, right? Ones and zeros. Because whenever you have an image, you can convert it into an RGB. And then these RGB images uh, for different animals can be represented as ones and zeros right so it will be a sequence uh, of ones and zeros or an array of arrays uh, of ones and zero once you pass this data into this transformative layer uh, you're expecting your model uh, to come up with these predictions right so once it learns about these layers uh, you then say okay so for this first image that i've learned so far this is a dog right so you then compare to the targets now the true targets right because remember whenever you train a model you should have the targets we should have the labels right so you have your raw data and you should have the labels that uh, will tell uh, that that we use uh, to measure if our le machine learning model is doing well right so once you come up with your predictions why uh, you then compare it uh, to your true targets right and then the way you compare it is uh, the model uh, is going to use what you call a loss function so what a loss function uh, does is simply a function uh, within our model that will say uh, for this uh, prediction how far off our model is compare is computing against achieving some true target once you compute that loss function uh, it will then produce what you call a loss score right and then this loss score uh, will then be passed to the optimizer so the reason why we are passing this loss score uh, to this optimizer is because we want to be able to adjust these weights so that uh, whenever we patch these new adjusted weights, we are trying to decrease this loss score so that our data or our predictions will become more and more correct. So sort of like a fine tuning model um, um, where, where we are passing uh, what we found out from the original prediction and then we fine tuned it so that we sort of like tell it to say, to correct it, so to say uh, this image, maybe it was not a cat that time this is a dog right so we tell you that for example if you see uh, an image that looks like this with this binary data of representation of information this is not a cat this is actually a dog right so we'll pass that loss score back to the optimizer and then it will adjust the weights and then pass it again uh, to make predictions and so forth and so forth so this this loop uh, continuously happens uh, via the loss function producing the loss score that will adjust uh, these numbers to say how far off are we from computing the truth value and then we we'll pass it to the optimizer which is uh, which implements an algorithm actually called a back propagation algorithm uh, which takes the low score and feed it back uh, as an input uh, to our weights right in a direction that will lower the loss so the idea here is to say uh, whatever loss that we have found we need to lower it right so that the model will continuously learn and uh, be self-correct. So in the next section of this video, uh, we are now going to look at our first deep neural network. Uh, we're going to develop it from scratch uh, where we are going to do some bank classification and we will be sort of like doing some binary uh, uh, classification um, where we'll be predicting whether some people will take uh, a campaign that some specific bank is running. All right, so stay tuned and see you in the next one.